It is difficult to create a visual image even by using photographs, because pictures are static. It is very important to look in a person's eyes, watch their facial expressions, gestures, movements and hear their voice. I was unable to do this, which is why it is difficult to reconstruct his appearance. Oraz Jandosov was born in 1899 in the village of Kaskilen, the Lubavinska residential area in the Verny district of the Simirechi region. He was born into a family of farmers. In 1918 he graduated from Verny School for Boys and the same year he entered the Bolshevik party and participated in the revolutionary movement. It was a difficult time for Kazakh people. The victory of the proletarian revolution in 1917 gave a new beginning to the Kazakh history, which is characterized by the establishment of the Kazakh statehood and the new wave of Kazakh intellectuals. Oraz Jandosov was an outstanding representative of that generation. He believed in all communist ideas. Although he had been serving to them, he never forgot the interests of his nation. In 1918-1919, a 20-year-old young man becomes the head of the Simirechi Regional Department of Nations Affairs which then became the regional Muslim party bureau and put a number of initiatives on the table. He had issued an order about the mandatory use of the Kazakh language. He had ordered to translate documents which were being sent to regions into the Kazakh language to make them comprehensible to people. He also made another order about Eid al -Adha. Over 70 years ago, he knew that this holiday would be very important for Muslim people. In 1919, Oraz Jandosov initiated the ITs of Aikins in Almaty, which involved Jambil Jabayev. Oraz Jandosov also invited Kenyan Azerbaev, who he held in very high esteem. Oraz Jandosov supported Kenyan Azerbaev. He was like a flame of fire, which produces a lot of sparkles. It was the main feature of his temperament. He was a revolutionary, and to be a genuine revolutionary, a person should be born that way. Not everyone can be a revolutionary. Oraz Jandosov had held leading party posts. His career was progressing since the system needed him as a leader, an organizer and a wise man. Когда вот я начала писать о нем, многие говорили, зачем ты берешь эту тему? Он же коммунист. When I started writing about him, people were wondering why I had chosen this topic, since Zuras was a communist. As you know, time puts everything in perspective, and we saw that communists not only served to the Soviet government. Using the Soviet power, they wanted to support Kazakh people. Thus, they served Kazakh people. At that time, Kazakhstan was combating illiteracy, switching the Kazakh language to the Latin alphabet, creating first universities, establishing scientific work in the country, popularizing socialistic culture and using old-school intellectuals. The country launched a very complex and multidimensional work and Jandosov took the responsibility to be in charge of this process. In 
in 1928 or late 1929, Oras Jandosev had become the People's Commissar of Enlightenment of the Kazakh Soviet Socialist Republic. At that time, he promoted the opening of the first universities in Kazakhstan. Oras Jandosov is not only the representative of intellectuals, he made a significant contribution to the preparation of Kazakh Soviet intellectuals. He was the first chancellor of the Kazakh Agricultural University, which educated a number of young people. Then he was the representative of the organizing committee for the establishment of the Kazakh State University, the first university in Kazakhstan. In addition, Oras Jandosov recommended appointing Sanjaras Findiarov to the post of the first chancellor of this university. Oras Jandosov invited such members of Allah Sharda as Ahmed Baytursinov, Alihan Yermekov and Haveltus Muhambetov to participate in the education process. Being the director of the state and currently the National Library, he promoted the work of such non-proletarian writers as Muhtar Ouezov. His party career had been winding down, but his public activity was in a full swing. Jandosov was the head of the Society for Kazakhstan Study, the precursor of the modern Academy of Sciences, as well as the head of the Association of Research Workers. He was also a teacher. I was amazed by his level of methodological culture. He considered all questions of pre-revolutionary history and the Soviet time, first of all from the methodological point of view. He defined common factors and theoretical aspects of a problem. There is a saying that a person who thinks clearly, speaks clearly, and it is impossible to see this quality in my father's manuscripts. My father never wrote any drafts to documents or reports. He almost never made any corrections to his works. But time is unforgiving, and the past can't be changed. It was the time of repressions. At first, the Soviet power destroyed members of the Alash party, and then started to eliminate those who had been defending the interests of the Kazakh nation. I am not talking only about Kazakhstan. When I am talking about the Kazakh nation, I refer to Oras Jandosov. But in addition, the Soviet power had destroyed people who had been defending national interests in the entire Union, in such countries as Uzbekistan and Azerbaijan. Stalin. It was not a mere chance that Stalin personally signed the official document to arrest Jandosov. He knew the intellectual level of Jandosov. In general, Stalin prosecuted such representatives of the Kazakh intellectuals as Turar Riskulov and Mustafa Shokai. People had just started to understand what people, who were undesirable for Stalin, meant for the nation. Oral Jandosov was such a person. Oras Jandosov was arrested in 1937 and executed by shooting in 1938. His rehabilitation took place only in 1957. I filed an application for his rehabilitation to the Supreme Court of the USSR since my father was convicted and executed by sentence of the Ministry Collegium of the Supreme Court. After filing an application, I came there once or twice and saw a lot of people, mainly widows and children of famous people. There were even the wives of marshals. It was partial rehabilitation. I say partial because Oras Jandosov was rehabilitated. His works were published only after Kazakhstan had gained independence. 
He was rehabilitated, but nobody will return us the years that had been lost. A person disappeared, and nobody offered apologies. I just received a piece of paper which said that Oraz Jandosov had been rehabilitated, and that's all. The regime thought that this was enough. The tragedy of the so-called second wave of Kazakh intellectuals is in the fact that they believed in the idea of socialism and finally became its victims. There are small periods of time in the history of humanity when every country experiences outbreaks of passionarity. The Kazakh nation had also experienced the outbreak of passionarity, as Gumilev called it, in the 19th to 20th centuries. Jandosov was one of those outstanding people who radiated incredible vitability. Oraz Jandosov had just graduated from school and studied at the Agricultural Academy for two years. Destiny prevented him from studies, but his natural talent, sincerity and commitment helped him to achieve excellent results in his career. He was a party member, a Soviet manager and an active supporter of the cultural and spiritual area. People believe that my father was a charming, educated and cultivated person. Being a historian, I would like to say that he was a communist and a democrat with social interests at his heart, and he did a lot for people of Kazakhstan and for his country. The versatile talent of Raz Jandosov, his high efficiency and honesty in front of people, the state and the government should serve as a role model for the young people of Kazakhstan. The sincerity of Raz Jandosov is a supreme human quality and young people can take it as an example. Today we are in need of such people. It is difficult to create a visual image even by using photographs, because pictures are static. It is very important to look in the person's eyes, watch their facial expressions, gestures, movements and hear their voice. 